The Dictionary Infernal was written by Jacqueline de Plancy. He was born in the late 1700s and he lived to 83 years old. He was an occultist, demonologist, and writer. But it's interesting because most of the internet and books, yeah, right, <laughs> say that he was a demonologist. Actually, he was a Catholic. He became a Catholic. So he started out his life as a non-believer. He was a follower of um, Voltaire. Um, in 1818, he wrote the first um, dictionnaire, Infernal, which is the, his book of demonology. And he revised it six times. There have been many different books on demons. Um, this one here was written in the 1400s, late 1400s. Um, it became a Catholic book, actually, and it became a second bestseller 200 years ago after the Bible, believe it or not. So it talked about witches and demons and, you know, how you can, like, get rid of witches and kill them off. And it was kind of a scary book. And there's been many different uh, books on demons. This is a compendium of demonology and magic written in the late 1700s. The, uh, the illustrations are actually really beautiful and really interesting, all of them. I wish I, I could show you more, but it was just, it's amazing. And then Modern Times, Book of Demons, was Anton LaVey's Satanic Bible, where he actually broke up the chapters into four different sections. So he starts out with, uh, the first chapter is about Satan. And uh, what's interesting is that Anton LaVey actually kind of categorized his demons as elements. So Satan represented fire. And actually, um, do you guys recognize this guy? I think he was at Roderick's chamber like 20 years ago. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> actually, I think you, you're here. Uh, <laughs> And then there's Lucifer, which is the element of light or air. And then Belial, which represents earth. And this is a famous drawing of Belial actually walking back to the gates of hell. So you can see the gates of hell and the demons and Belial. He's kind of the wanderer. He doesn't like obey anybody. And then Leviathan, who represents water. And let's see, so here's a little like broken up chapters of Anton LaVey's Bible. And then what you find is that other demonologists have categorized demons and kind of structured their hierarchies in, um, in different ways. So they've taken like what one author will structure them as and kind of classify them differently. So there actually has, there's literature out there that talks about the evil trinity, which is made up of Lucifer, Beelzebub, and Astaroth. Astroth's actually a pretty interesting one. So now back to the Dictionary Infernal. I actually like to call it the Book of Demonology. That sounds so much better. So the first one was written in 1818, and then there were six different versions. He became a Catholic 12 years after being a non-believer, and then all of a sudden he went back to it, had it illustrated, 69 different illustrations, which is 69, it's kind of interesting. So, <laughs> actually, Anton LaVey did his Satanic Bible in 1969. There must be some weird thing. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, the, uh, the illustrator was Louis de Breton. And um, he, he basically structured, he, he, had, he followed the, uh, the, the British way of structuring these demons, kind of like, princes and dukes and kings and it was it's so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over the seven most famous demons first and also kind of pair them up with the sin that they represent the seven deadly sins so the first one is mammon and he represents greed um <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> The second one is Belphegor, who represents sloth. It's not a heavy metal band. It's a black metal band, actually. <laughs> no, actually, it's a demon. <laughs> the, 
The third one is Asmodeus, and this is the guy who tempts married people <laughs> into infidelity <laughs> and lust. And uh, you guys. <laughs> this is a Beelzebub, Lord of the Flies. He's actually one of the most famous ones, and he represents gluttony. And so the idea was that when anybody was possessed by Beelzebub, they would be covered in flies. He's the Lord of the Flies. And, but you can make the connection of why, like, food and flies and all that. Um, and there's Leviathan, which is actually not in this dictionary. Um, he's not illustrated. He's actually not even mentioned, but I, would, I, I put him in here just to kind of complete the seven deadly sins. And he's the demon of water and the demon of storms, represents envy. And there's Lucifer, <laughs> who represents pride. And then there's one more demon, one of those seven ones. I'm not sure who. <laughs> it's not our president. Well, actually, it is. But <laughs> so, <laughs> so it, yeah, Satan. And he represents wrath. But what's interesting is that nowadays we use Baphomet, which is actually um, not a, originally a demon. It was a kind of like a god that was brought on or I should say, was represented during the uh, 1400s by the Knights of Templar. And he evolved, and nowadays we just, we use the symbol of Baphomet to represent Satan. And this is the uh, seal or sigil of Baphomet, which you're all pretty familiar with. In fact, you can invoke him if you, you know, wear this. So what's interesting is that there's been so many of these like famous demons that are represented by horns, you know, the, like the, the Baphomet and the, inc including Krampus. He's not included. <laughs> He's not included in this dictionary, but I thought it was interesting to bring him up because he, he's the demon of Christmas. And there's actually a photo, you could see it, that was uh, photographed in the early um, 1800s where they're doing like a little Christmas parade with Krampus. I think that's pretty interesting. And then this is Rohavart, um, and he's Satan's companion. I included him because he has the horns, and he kind of looks like um, Krampus. I thought there was a little, it was interesting to, to see this, like these different um, illustrations. This is Albigor, also called Eligos, and he's the Grand Duke. He, this is uh, one of the um, illustrations from the book. Totally, it's, it's a black metal. Actually, I'm lying, I'm a demon. I'm lying to you guys, I'm making all this up. <laughs> no, Astaroth, so you guys are all possessed by Astaroth. And uh, math, science, and art, seriously, like math, science, and art. Yeah, I know, right? Like, look at that guy, like, he's got, all right, I know, right? So I can't believe these people actually thought that math, science, and art were demons. I mean, all right. So here's a sigil if you want to conjure him. And uh, it's the seal or sigil. You can conjure him. Just copy that, put it on your, like, right here. <laughs> We're a little patch. <laughs> this is Ammon. And um, Ammon is the demon that actually remembers when you've made a pact with the devil and you've sold your soul. So here's a sigil. Copy it. You can, if you ever need anything, just, you know, conjure that guy and he'll remember. And uh, this is Boer. He teaches uh, evil morals and natural philosophy. And that brings us to the end of my lecture. And I want to raise a toast. Raise a toast to demons. <laughs>